Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Navis Nobilite and today we're going to wrap up the Imperial Navy ship overview with an overview of the different individual fleets that you can take for the Imperial Navy. Now this is probably the sixth time I've had to remake this uh, video so I'm going to power through it so if I have any kind of mistakes or errors or I have a moment to pause so I can read something please bear with me but this is going to be one of the longer videos. All of the Imperial Navy fleets follow a certain number of standard rules. Now, the one of them is up here in the special rules area, specifically involving the upgrade for the powered ram. Uh, anytime you have a six-up prow, you can take a powered ram. That includes torpedoes or Nova Cannon, though you only can really model uh, the ram on a torpedo prow, at least on the classic minis. Now, this upgrade allows you to impart one automatic hit during a successful ram. I cannot stress how useful this is, especially when you're dealing with enemies that are normally far harder to hit than normal, like Space Marine players or uh, the Necrons. This is a very handy upgrade, and it's only five points, so bear that in mind. The Imperial Navy is quite good at ramming, and you should not be as afraid to, de to uh, do it as you may think. Now, remember this can only be taken on a 6-up prow. That means any ship with a 5-up prow, like a couple of the battleships or any Grand Cruiser, simply cannot take this upgrade. All right, moving on to the very first fleet. This is Segmentum Obscurus, Gothic Sector Fleet List. This is the base fleet list that came out of the original Blue Book with a couple of minor modifications to points values from the 2010 FAQ. The fleet commander rules are pretty universal across all of the Imperial Navy. So you have three levels of leadership, 8, 9, and 10, for 50, 100, and 150 points, respectfully. You have the uh, automatically you get one reroll for the fleet and you can purchase up to three more for 25, 75, and 150 respectfully for one, two, or three extra rerolls. Now, generally speaking, in a Imperial fleet, I very rarely find myself purchasing the Solar Admiral because there are really good flagship options to that automatically give you a bonus to your leadership. I actually most commonly take the Fleet Admiral at leadership eight and then put him on a vessel that gives him an automatic plus one leadership, basically saving you 50 points. Now, you can do the same thing with the standard Admiral at LD9 and put him on an Emperor or an Oberon, and that will get him the effective benefit of being a Solar Admiral without spending the additional 50 points. The uh, Solar Admiral is pretty useless if you have an Emperor or an Oberon on the table because that leadership bonus can never go above 10. So bear that in mind for the future. If you have something that requires a good leadership, but no opportunity to improve it, then maybe the Solar Admiral in really, really big points games becomes an option. But ultimately, what's more important than your base leadership are your rerolls. And generally, I rarely buy more than just one extra because having one reroll is usually enough to save my bacon. Having an extra one can always be handy. The other two options for two extra rerolls or three extra rerolls are really if you're just trying to pill, uh, backfill uh, a, a gap in points. Moving on to the actual ships, the uh, Imperial Navy for the Gothic Sector can have two battleships, the Emperor or the Retribution. Battle, uh, you may have one battleship for every three cruisers or battle cruisers. That means if you you ha it's any combination of battle cruiser and cruiser to get one battleship. For battle cruisers, you have access to the Mars and the Overlord. This is not a bad thing. The Overlord and the Mars are two excellent ships for their purpose in this fleet. And down here in cruisers, we have the Dictator, the Dominator, the Tyrant, the Gothic, the Lunar, and the Dauntless. Now, recognize that the Dominator can only be taken in one other fleet, and that is the Baca Sector Fleet, which really needs to be separated from the rest because it doesn't function the same way as the rest of the Imperial Navy fleets. View the Dominator ultimately as a special weapon that only the Gothic Sector Fleet list can use. So bear that in mind. This is your secret weapon right here the dominator it is the cheapest nova cannon that you can buy and your escorts you have the fire sword firestorm the sword and the cobra pretty standard escort loadout now ultimately this is a very simple fleet it's a very easy fleet to start with i would recommend this fleet for any imperial navy players that are just getting into the game 
uh, simply because nice, simple, easy rules, nothing flashy, no mixing of fleets, nothing involving too many upgrades or lack thereof. So this is basically your gateway drug to Battlefleet Gothic from the Imperial Navy perspective. Uh, my personal favorite fleet for tournament play on the Imperial Navy side is two Lunars, two Dictators, one Gothic, and two Overlords. That is enough to make anything in the game reconsider its life choices. So bear that in mind. This is still a very effective list, and you can still win readily with this list. Just because it's old doesn't mean it isn't good. All right, moving on, we go into the Bastion Fleets of Segmentum Obscurus. Now, there are a couple different ways you can play this as well. Now, you have the base Bastion Fleet. We have your standard Admiral spread with the same point costs as before. But your battle, but your ships options have changed. Your battleships, you can, you have, they have added in the Apocalypse class battleship for the same cost as the Emperor at 365. You have the Emperor and you have the Retribution. For battle cruisers, you also have the option of taking Imperial Grand Cruisers. Now, you may include one battle cruiser or grand cruiser for every two cruisers. Grand cruisers do not count as cruisers for the purposes of fielding the battleships, so bear that in mind. Your options for grand cruiser are the Exorcist, the Vengeance, and the Avenger, and your battle cruisers you, are, you have access to the Mars, the Armageddon, or the Overlord. Now, recognize that the access to these grand cruisers is effectively allowing you a great deal more flexibility in the design of your fleet if you want to build a shorter range brawler fleet or you want to have the access to the exorcist grand cruiser as your carrier option you can find it here just recognize that if you're going to be investing in grand cruisers you will much less likely be uh, investing in battleships. It's really the choice of do you want to put your you know, your big guns into your battleships or do you want to put them into grand cruisers. Ultimately though it gives you the option. You can choose where it goes. And one important thing you have access to the Armageddon battle cruiser and the Overlord. Now ultimately these two ships kind of conflict in their purpose. Um, it really depends on your feel and flavor of them. But recognize that the Armageddon and the Mars hold, two ver hold a very important position in this fleet. Because if you look at the standard cruisers, you have the Dictator, the Tyrant, the Gothic, the Lunar, and the Dauntless, and the three members of the Endeavor family, the Endeavor, the Endurance, and the Defiant. There is no Dominator here, which means that there is no cheap Nova Cannon option. You are not going to be getting a Nova Cannon for less than 200 points in this fleet. So, what the Armageddon does is it gives you another option for, while well, a expensive option, it gives you another option for a Nova Cannon if you don't want to put it on your Mars. It'll be 255 points, but it's still cheaper than 270. Now, the other thing about this fleet is you have access to the Endeavor, the Endurance, and Defiant. There is a restriction on the Endurance and the Defiant. You cannot have more Endurance and Defiance than the number of Endeavors. So you have, if you have three Endeavors, you can have up to three Endurance or Defiance. You can't have three Endurances and three Defiance. So that's your maximum number. So bear that in mind when you're building this fleet. Now, these ships are phenomenally good. I go over why they're so good in their individual uh, ship loadouts uh, and the ship overviews. So go and watch those. I highly recommend it. But the Bastion Fleet's real gimmick here is access to the Grand Cruisers. That is really what separates it from the others. Your escort options are the same Fire Sword, Sword, and Co Firestorm, Sword, and Cobra. Now, this base fleet is pretty standard, aside from the access to the Grand Cruisers, but there are two other ways you could play it. Namely, Battlefleet Cadia, which changes up your leadership rules. Whenever you're rolling for leadership for a squadron of escorts or a capital ship, you roll 2d6 and pick the lowest. Now that seems rather crippling, and you're going to have a lot of really low LD ships, but you have the benefit of buying 0 to 5 veteran captains at 50 points each. This conveys a plus 1 leadership, and it gives that squadron of ships, because it must be in a squadron, uh, an additional reroll, just for that squadron. So it's very handy if you're a big Cadia fan and you want to actually field a very fluffy and fun-to-play fleet, and you just happen to use... Segment, uh, the Segmentum Obscurus Bastion Fleet for your fleet list with these additional rules. Now, there is one other 
fleet version that you can take of the Bastion fleet, which is the Reserve fleet. Now, the Reserve fleet is a bit more complicated. There's a lot more things you can do here. The specific change is that you can utilize the Reserve rules, which means ultimately you can, if you take um, uh, every three vessels of a given type, escort, cruiser, battleship, you may take one of these Chaos ships as an option so ultimately it's you may take if for every three cruisers you can take one of these five ships the repulsive the executor the hades the murder or carnage now the hades murder and carnage are okay options they don't really function well within the imperial navy they do give you a good amount of long-range firepower that you may not get normally in the imperial navy but maintaining fleet cohesion is very difficult the real benefit are these two ships here the executor and the repulsive now i went over the repulsive class grand cruiser in regards to the imperial navy before it is the best ship point for point in the game you cannot take the extended range on the three lances but you can give it its third shield so this is instantly probably your best option it's also not too terribly expensive now the executor is a really good option as well it's not as good as the repulsive so i didn't make a video on it i'll probably go over the executor when i go over it specifically in its own video for chaos but the executor is basically a is a baby's first apocalypse battleship it has a strength six lance on each side of it and that's all it has. It's just a one-trick lance pony. But it's really good at its one-trick lance pony. So if you want a bigger, meaner gothic cruiser with no prow weapons, that's basically what the Executor is. Now, there is the downside of taking this fleet. By taking a reserve fleet, all vessels are prone to certain unexpected events, known as strange happenings. Whenever you uh, roll a double for a command check, your ship becomes what is known as unreliable for the rest of the game. Unreliable ships will not to continue to fight if crippled. Crippled ships will attempt to disengage every turn and run for the nearest point on the nearest table edge if they fail. And if a vessel in a reserve fleet also fails, it's command checked by rolling a double. It uh, Not only does it become unreliable, but it also does nothing else that round. It just simply moves ahead and, go, and kind of, re, you know, drools on itself and curls up in a fetal position. When you are facing against Chaos, however, it gets even more ridiculous. Uh, any vessel that has already become unreliable rolls a second double for a command check. It must attempt to disengage. And you have no other option. It just it simply attempts to disengage. If the second double is also a failure for that command check, the ship immediately defects to the Chaos side. No, no one gets victory points for the vessel. But, you know, if you, if you like a really fun and fluffy fleet... By all means, play against the Chaos player with this fleet. I've done it before. I lost spectacularly, but it was a lot of fun while doing so. That's another great thing about this game. Losing can be really fun, too. All right, back onto now the Segmentum Solar Armageddon Sector fleet list. Now, this is where the, the first time that where the actual fleet commander rules are kind of mixed up. Because while you have the, the same access to fleet admirals, admirals, and solar admirals, you also have access to masters of the fleet. Now, if you take in this fleet a Space Marine Battle Barge, you may take a master of the fleet. Okay, it's a very cheap uh, commander at LD10, but... Uh, recognize that you have to put him on the battle barge. It's basically a pseudo mix of alliance between space, uh, space marine fleet and the Imperial Navy. So right here, if your fleet commander gets a single uh, reroll, including his points cost, and wants to buy more if you wish, yeah. Um, but it depends. The cost depends. Master of the fleet gets cheaper rerolls. Um, if you want to master the fleet, you must have a battle barge, as said right here, who will always be assigned to the battle barge and cannot be assigned to a non-space marine ship. As long as the ship includes at least one Imperial capital ship, it may include a fleet admiral, admiral, or solar admiral, who will always be assigned to the Imperial Navy vessel and not to the space marine vessel. So there is some segregation going on within the Imperial Navy. Now, onto the actual fleet list, you will see that there are some major changes here in the, the lineup. First things first in your battleships, you have access to the Apocalypse, the Emperor, the Oberon, but not the Retribution. The Oberon effectively replaces the Retribution in this fleet. And you have access to the Space Marine Battle Barge. No, no, Space Marine ships cannot be squadron with anything that is not Space Marine, so bear that in mind. 
Now, battle cruisers. You may now. Here's another very important thing. You may include up to one battle cruiser in your fleet for every cruiser. So the normal two to one ratio does not apply here. For every one cruiser, it's one battle cruiser. Now your battleships are the same, one for three. But really, this is all about the battle cruisers in this fleet. This is the superpower of the Segmentum Solar Armageddon sector list. Battle cruisers all dang day, and they're really pushing you to take the Armageddon. On your standard cruiser list, you have the Dictator, the Tyrant, the Gothic, the Lunar. You have access to the Space Marine Strike Cruiser, the Endeavor, the Endurance, and Defiant. Now, the Endeavor family shares the same restrictions uh, as in the a Segmentum Obscurus list. Bear that in mind. And over here in Escorts, you have the Firestorm, the Falchion. There is no axe to the sword. The, the Falchion takes its place. The Nova Frigate, which is a Space Marine vessel. Rapid Strike Vessel Firestorm, which is Space Marine. The Gladius and the Hunter, both Space Marine. And the other two Rapid Strike Vessel versions of the Sword and Cobra, which are both Space Marine. Now, the Falchion takes over the place of the Sword. That's to be expected because of the uh, high weapon uh, battery strength. But um, this fleet really focuses on getting as many Mars and Armageddon cruisers onto the field. So the way that I normally field this fleet, I take... Uh, a whole bunch of Endeavors, Endurances, and Defiance, and then fill the rest in with Mars and Armageddon, and then I either take an Oberon or Apocalypse, depending on where I'm putting my Nova Cannons. So if I put all my Nova Cannons, if I don't take any Nova Cannons and I have a bunch of Armageddons, I'm likely going to be taking an Apocalypse. If I take a couple of Mars, I'm probably going to be bringing an Oberon. But ultimately, this fleet is a lot of fun to play. You get a lot more firepower in this fleet simply because of all of the... the battle cruisers you can field with near limitless restrictions on them so this is one of my favorite fleets it's a lot of fun to play and you get a lot of firepower out of it i would actually say this is probably the most overpowered imperial navy list because even even this fleet makes the ad mech fleet kind of wither by comparison because the ad mech while it is very good there's they don't really have any ships that really compare to the armageddon on a uh uh, toe to toe level. Even their Gothic is not as good, in my opinion, as the Armageddon. So, moving on, we are into Battlefleet Baca. Now, things really get weird with Battlefleet Baca because they have access to a lot of different ships and a couple of different special rules that are unique, like Lord Admiral Zacharias Wrath. He is a massively expensive commander at 200 points. He comes with two re rolls, and he has his ship, no matter what he is on, gets a uh, specialized plus one defensive boarding uh, modifier, which is handy. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. Now, uh, you have access to the standard leadership, uh, fleet commanders, and you have access to the standard ax uh, the standard um, rerolls. Now, he has a flagship, the Dominus Astra, which is just an Emperor battleship, that if it is taken, he must be the commander. Plain and simple. Uh, if the Dominus Astra is taken, he has to be there, and if, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, simply put, and you can't take it without Lord Admiral Wrath. So you're putting in a huge amount of points, uh, to take an Emperor in this fleet. Now, you can take Lord Admiral Wrath on a different battleship, but you cannot have the Dominus Astra without Lord Admiral Wrath being on it. So bear that in mind. Now, moving on to the actual ship access battleships obviously the emperor so long as you take lord admiral wrath you cannot take it and he has to be on the emperor you have the retribution the victory and the vanquisher all of these are heavy gunships some of them are cheaper than others you're really going to be picking between the victory and the retribution the vanquisher is really only there if it because it's a cheap option for a battleship class vessel that has grand cruiser level firepower your battle cruisers you may have one for every two cruisers the Dominion, the Mercury, and the Armageddon. So, again, you, your carrier option is here in the Dominion, and you have the competition between the Mercury and the Armageddon for firepower. Now, I, between the two, I'd probably end up taking the Mercury, but the Armageddon still has a good place here. You, in your cruiser area, you have the only other fleet that has access to the Dominator, the Tyrant, the Gothic, and the Lunar, and the Endeavor, Endurance, and the Siluria. No uh, Defiant. No carrier for you. And these remember that these have a unique uh, profile that is provided. Uh, you can see my video on those as well in that particular section. In your escort options, you have the Havoc, the Sword, and the Viper. Now, uh, 
the important thing that you have to realize, you can take Adeptus Mechanicus as battle cruisers. So an Imperial Navy cruiser as a bat, uh, ad mech style as a battle cruiser, which can be very handy because you can take their dictators as a carrier option. It's probably going to end up being cheaper than the Dominion and probably more effective, at least in my opinion. Now, there is a... Uh, you cannot take an Archimagos, uh, plain and simple. And they cannot use uh, Fleet Commander rerolls, so bear that in mind. Now, uh, something that you should know, you can also take a Jovian as a reserve. Um, that's up to you if you want to replace the option of having uh, a, a Dominion or the uh, Emperor battleship. So that's something for you to decide, but again, you have to take it as a reserve. Uh, and you can take Rogue Trader Cruisers, basically the standard rules for all of those things. Be sure to read this section if you decide to take the reserves. Now, there are interesting rules in regards to turrets in and, and ad mech ships in Battlefleet Baca. Now, at, instead of taking the normal... Uh, Gift of the Omnissiah, you may take the rules for the fleet defense turret, which allows you to gain plus two turret strength with to any ship within 15 centimeter of the ship with this fleet defense turret. It's a uh, five point upgrade aside from the note rolling it randomly, but it's a handy little benefit because Baca is very, very weak on carriers. Now, when it comes to Battlefleet Baca warships themselves, any capital ship of Battlefleet Baca can add one turret for five additional points. This is very, very, very handy, but remember that reserve vessels cannot take this upgrade. So, again, this is all making up for the lack of carrier support, and all guns, you know, the bigger the gun, the better the ship uh, mentality of Battlefleet Baca. So, that's the Imperial Navy uh, fleets. They have a lot of different choices with a lot of different flavors, with a lot of different options. And it's really a matter of how you want to play your Imperial Navy. While they all function very similarly, what ships you're allowed to take really help determine the way you field the Imperial Navy as a whole. And given that you can take ram spikes on almost everything here, you have a very well-rounded series of ships and series of fleets that give you a lot of different choices for different flavors. Um, you have more aggressive and more defensive fleets. There are just a lot of choices here. I highly recommend you find the fleet that works the best with you. You should try all of them. And thanks to this, uh, thanks to you know Games Workshop back in the day, they gave you a lot of really f flavorful options if you want to play a more quirky fleet. It's not all about win at any cost uh, with all of these fleets because obviously you know you're going to have more success with an Armageddon Sector Segmentum Solar list than you would with the Reserve Fleet, but you can take that Repulsive and that Executor. So there's a lot of choices and a lot of fun uh, options here in the Imperial Navy. All right, everyone, I'm glad that I finally got through this video six times and finally got it right. All right, have a great day, and I'll see you all as I begin the Chaos Fleet. Have a great day.